this is novel because traditionally uh, Alzheimer's disease has been viewed as a disease of misfolded proteins by um, biologists and pathologists. Um, but as a clinician uh, and psychologist, when they think about the disease, they think of it as, uh, in the terms of clinical symptoms of memory trouble and, and things like that. It's been difficult to marry the two levels of, of uh, the disease process, from the proteins to the symptoms. Um, but we think the study of brain networks is a nice bridge between those two um, and may be able to build a more complete model of the disease process if we understand what's going on in brain networks. So we focused in on the, the default mode network mainly because that, that has been uh, implicated in Alzheimer's disease in the past and it lives in an area of the brain um, in, in the parietal lobe which has been highly associated with uh, Alzheimer's disease. So that's the network we focused on. We commonly find the you know, increases in connectivity uh, or in, uh, network activity um, in addition to decreases and that has traditionally been thought of as a, a compensatory process where this area is not functioning as well so other areas kind of pick up the slack and that was kind of a, a good thing um, but what we're suggesting is that the increase in connectivity is probably causing a lot of the trouble. When you ask a, a, an area of the brain to work harder or do something new, um, that may be detrimental in the, in the long run. Um, so we ache in that to um, cascading failures that you'd see in a, a power grid where uh, a major um, uh, hub of, of power goes down and then other areas all around there have to pick up the slack. And, and if the power grid's robust enough, you, you, the lights stay on in your house. But if that uh, burden gets too high, then you'll blow those circuits too, and then the power goes out in your house. And that's the type of thing we're, we're thinking might be happening in uh, Alzheimer's disease. When you start thinking about the disease process instead of just the proteins, but you start thinking about it in terms of uh, brain activity, um, then uh, it opens up a whole new line of investigation in terms of what types of lifestyle interventions can be done to change brain activity in a way that's healthy that may prevent um, uh, these proteins from depositing uh, and causing Alzheimer's disease. So now that we are starting to develop this new model of Alzheimer's disease that incorporates uh, brain activity and brain networks, um, then we'll be able to move even earlier in the disease phase and look at brain networks and how uh, lifestyle interventions change brain networks and one day be able to say this is a healthy way to change brain networks and this is an unhealthy way to change brain networks with uh, whether that's uh, all sorts of lifestyle interventions from uh, uh, social activity, social engagement, to cognitive demanding tasks, to exercise, um, but all, sort of, all the way to pharmacology with drugs. Um, but that's certainly um, uh, off in the future as to whether it'll pan out that that's going to be the case.